Hey, John here. Let's talk about trees. Specifically, this lecture concerns itself with binary trees. So let's start with some definitions. Tree is a set of nodes, and when we draw trees, it's very common to draw the nodes as circles, right? So node, it looks like hoed. There we go. Node looks like a circle like this. Usually we'll put some sort of an indicator in there that represents its value, like uh, the letter A and so on. And much like we saw in a linked list, a node is a place that holds a value and other information that describes its relationship to other nodes. Where trees are concerned, what we'll see is we're defining a hierarchical relationship. So uh, this uh, node here, the, the first one at the top of the tree, all right, and then there will be a bottom down here, we will see is called the root. It's described like a regular tree, but upside down. The root is on the top, and the leaves we will see are on the bottom. So let's see what happens here in a tree. Because it's hierarchical, you can build a set of children, okay? These are children nodes. This is the root node here. This would be a what we call a three-airy uh, tree. All right. Now, in this video, we're talking about a binary, which would be a two airy tree. All right. So to create a binary tree, each node can have at most two children. All right. So let's just erase this. Sometimes you'll see things re referred to as an n airy tree or the uh, discussion would describe the arity of a tree that is also known as the degree of the tree. So the degree of a binary tree is two. That is what the main thing that makes it binary, okay, is its degree. So if we have a root called A and a B and a C child, these two children, because they both have the same parent, are often referred to as siblings. I can have a D and an E down here as well as if I want. The D, E, and C now are the leaves of this tree. Any node that has no children is a leaf node. So B and C are siblings, D and E are siblings, B is the parent of D, D is the child of B, D is the grandchild, we can say, of A, A is the grandparent of D, and so on. You see a lot of family tree terminology used from time to time in uh, data structures that are represented as trees as well. Sometimes you'll re see the B, D, and E portion of this tree referred to as a subtree. So you'd say that B is the root of this subtree, right? A might be the parent of a subtree whose root is B, all right? Okay, some more observations. The root has no parent. That's what defines it as the root. The lines that connect these nodes together are called edges. Okay, these are the links in a linked list. These are the edges. Are the, you, as we will see, uh, become the links inside of a tree. Edges can be undirected, like I've drawn here. They can be directed, which means they have an arrow. They have a you know a direction, just like linked lists have a direction. A link flows in this case from A to B. A points at B, perhaps, to implement this directed link. And they can also be directed the other way. You can even build trees with, with links going both ways, just like a doubly linked list. You can have a doubly linked to a, a tree, I guess you could say. So just like the tree as a whole has a degree. Oops, my pen is dying here. Uh, each individual node can also have a degree. The degree of C, for example, is zero. The degree of E is zero, D is zero, so therefore all the leaves have a degree of zero. B is a degree of two. If I change the tree and put a, a, a J maybe over here, now C has a degree of one, okay? When it's mixed together like this, when you define the degree of a tree, you're always talking about the maximum degree that is possible in any given node. So now we can talk about a path, all right? Let's make some room. What is a path? Well, a path from the root, 
we'll see there's one and only one path that starts at the root and ends at any given node. So the root, or the path from the root to J, for example, we would say is A, C, J. This represents the path you take from the root to get to J. The path to E is A, B, E, A, B, D for this one. The path to B is A, B. The path to C is A, C, all right? Okay, a little more terminology here. Let's clean up our diagram. Let's talk about what we mean when we talk about the depth of a tree or the level of a tree, all right? So by definition, the depth of the root is zero. It's on level zero, so they go up this way. So C is one, J is two, and so on. If the J had children, it would be three, and so on. And more formally, you could say that the definition of the depth is all root nodes, the one and only one root node has a depth of zero, and, and any other node has a depth that is equal to the depth of its parent plus one. Now let's talk about the height. The height just goes the other way around. The height of J is zero, the height of C is one, and the height of A is two. Now this can get a little bit tricky because what happens if we have a situation where you got a tree that looks like this, right? What's the height of B in this case? Well, the height of B is zero. That suggests the definition of the height of any leaf is zero. J and B are the only leaf nodes in this tree. By definition, they have a height of zero. So A is both the height of one and two, depending on which path you want to look down, right? Well, the height of a tree is defined by the maximum height of any path, okay? So the height of this tree is two, the height of B is zero, the height of J is zero, the height of C is one. C and B, again, are siblings with different heights. Now let's talk about what it means to be strictly binary. So let's say we have a tree that looks like this. That tree is what we call strictly binary because every node in this tree has either two children or zero, okay? Turns out that is also strictly binary. So let's say we have a strictly binary tree. And by the way, this is also called a full tree. This is also a strictly binary tree here. Okay, that's also strictly binary, Why? Right? Because these guys have zero children, zero children, uh, and two and two. So either two or zero children for every node. This tree here is a little bit off angled here. That's okay. Uh, it's still strictly binary uh, and it is full, even though it's a little out of balance here. Now, if you have a tree that looks like this, that is strictly binary, which means it's full, and all the leaves are on the same level, then we call this a complete tree, all right? A complete tree is a strictly binary tree with all leaves on the same level. It turns out that it's also interesting to consider the case of an almost complete tree. Well, notice this is no longer even strictly binary, right? Because this guy has one child and some of the other guys have two. This is what we call almost complete. And by almost complete, it means it would be a complete tree, but... I can remove one or more of the furthest right leaf nodes, okay? Whether I remove one, two, or three of these leaves over here, in all cases, that is still considered what we call an almost complete tree. So that is an almost complete tree, all right? So let's say we put this guy back in here and we make it look like this. F and G, H and I over here. And we ask the question, is that almost complete? And the answer is no, because the leaf nodes that have been removed are not all on the same level. What we're doing, there would have to be these nodes in here. If there were nodes here, then it would be almost complete. But the problem is I did more to this tree a would-be complete tree, then simply remove these leaf nodes over here, the four leaves that would be over here, because I also removed these two nodes over there. Maybe this was X and Y. Now it's almost complete. 
as would be this thing here. Let's put a Q in there, and maybe and there's an R over here. This is still almost complete because we're just dealing with removing or adding back nodes in the lower right. If we remove every one of these nodes, we're still almost complete. Still almost complete. If we remove this one, it turns out we've removed the whole row, and by the way, now we're back to a complete tree again. If and only if this is a complete binary tree and the leaves are on what level? Zero, one, two here. And we know that the number of leaves is gonna equal two to the D power, where D is the depth, all right? So in this case, it's squared, which equals four. And you can see there's four leaves. And we can also say the number of internal nodes, that is, a, B, and C are internal nodes in this particular tree because uh, an internal node is defined as a node that has no children, okay? So the number of internal nodes in a complete binary tree of depth D, in this case two, is then two to the D power minus one, which would be uh, three in this case, right? Because two squared is four minus one is three, and then we end up with the three like this, all right? We can put all this together and say that the total number of nodes in this tree is 2 to the d plus 1 minus 1 like this, right? So the total number of nodes in this tree is 2 plus 1 is 3. So that would be 2 to the third power minus 1. 2 to the third power is 8 minus 1 equals 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right? So this is the total number of nodes in a complete binary tree. So we can look at another property. The total number of nodes in this tree. Now it's not a complete tree, so let's look at another way to count the total number of nodes in a tree, right? Well, that would simply be 2n minus 1, where n is the number of leaves. So I have 1, 2, 3 leaves. So 2 times 3 is 6, minus 1 is 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that checks out, at least for this tree, right? So continuing this line of thought, so that if this turns out to be neither complete nor almost complete, like this tree here is not almost complete, but you can see it is still strictly binary, right? It is uh, such that every node has either two children or zero, all right? That math still holds. So this is actually more, more generalizable than to simply say that that equals the number of nodes in a almost complete tree. This is uh, more accurately stated as a formula describing the number of nodes in any strictly binary tree. And now that we've got some terminology down, let's think about how one would store or build one of these structures in memory, right? Well, we know about linked lists. And if we use directed edges, and they all direct downward like this, we could define a structure that represents this A node like this, right? You know, struct node. Boy, I cannot write at that angle, can I? <laughs> let's, let's erase this and move it over, all right? A. Let's make a smaller tree, okay? We have a B and a C. So what would that thing look? How would you store this, right? Struct, maybe node would look like this, right? So you have your value. Maybe this is a character value, right? Because I'm using letters, value. And then we would say like left. We talk about the children, oops. Struct uh, node star left and a node star right. That would do it, right? These two things here would represent pointers to the two children, or the at most two children of any given node, right? And then we can just go through here, we can do a new on a node and we can connect these things up, they point to their uh, children node, or we could set them to zero, right? These could be set to null to represent that there are no children down there. So that's one way to do it. Let's look at another way to do it. We can save memory 
by not storing all the pointers. Let's draw another tree here. So let's say I have a tree here that is either complete or almost complete. Let's start with the uh, complete case, right? F and G, so that is a complete tree. Now you can store these using an array and save all that extra memory that would otherwise be filled with pointers, especially if the value of each one of these nodes is a single character. You're wasting two whole pointers in memory space just to hold one character. So it turns out these map directly into an array if you do it right. Now if you store them in this array in what we call level order, right? So this is, you know, level zero. If you look at the depth, level one, level two, right? So if you put A over here, then you say B and C, and you say D, E, F, G, you'll see that there's some simple math that you can use to generate, to figure out which position in this tree each one of these values represents. So we've arbitrarily chosen to store uh, the root node A first, right? So let's call, and, and what is this if it's an array, right? That is at, at, at uh, index zero, right? So if we use this simple math here, 2K plus one, to represent the index of the left child and then 2k plus 2 to equal the right child we see this works out perfectly right so what is 2 times 0 plus 1 is 1 that's where b is all right, B is the left child of A, so it satisfies this math here. And 2K plus 2 is the right child. You can see that coming because we're going to just be one further over from where B is, so that is the right child of the root. Now, where's the left child of B going to be, right? Well, that's 2 times 1 plus 1. So that's 3, right? And that's where we find D. Well, where's the right child of B, right? Well, that's 2 times 1, which is 2 plus 2. So that would be 4. And you can see that's where we ended up putting our E. So what about this guy? Well, node C is at index 2. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5. That better be the left child of C, and we see that it is. And the other guy down here, the only one left, G, is 2K plus 2. He's the right child of, of, of C, so that's 4 plus 2, which is 6. So you can store a tree in, in an array, but it turns out you waste a lot of space if there's missing nodes. What if this one here is missing, right? Well, then you've got like a hole in there, right? So we call this a sparse array. This one's not too bad. There's only one missing element. It turns out that if you use a complete tree, it fills the array perfectly, as you just saw, and so will an almost complete tree. Why? Because the ones missing in an almost complete tree will always be the ones on the furthest right end. This allows us to do the maximum density in our array by cutting off the end for any missing node. So if you take the total number of nodes and you allocate an array with that many elements, and if and only if it is almost complete or complete, it turns out it will fit into that array perfectly with no holes. So hopefully this gives you a good idea on what binary trees are and how to represent them in a program. Thanks for watching. See you next time.